Hello everyone, welcome to Sunya IS and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about movements of ocean water. Now, we've talked about where and how water exists on the planet and there are specific movements of ocean water that we need, need to study primarily. There are two kinds of movements that we need to be very clear about, three kinds of movements. One is a wave, one is a tide and then another is ocean current. These are the broad categories and in fact, tide is a subsection of a wave only, right? Tide is a form of a wave only. But overall, what we have to do is, uh, we have to study these three kind of movements of water on the ocean. Uh, and it's very important from the exam perspective. Now, before we start, let me just tell you a little bit about this course that we are running which is revise entire prelim syllabus through 3000 plus MCQs, wherein we have already done Indian polity, we have done modern history, we have done Indian economy, we are doing geography, and then we'll do environment and ecology, so that your entire uh, syllabus, will be following it by art and culture, ancient medieval, science and tech, and current affairs also. So the purpose is that your entire syllabus should be completed, and you should be very well aware of the current pattern of uh, questions that is being asked nowadays, right? So if you want to know more about it, if you get the course, you will be able to solve the questions beforehand and come to this class only if and when required to save your time because right now time is the most important resource that you have in your hand. So you can contact on this number, visit this website and uh, you can get to know more about this course. With this, let's start with the first question. Ocean waves are rhythmic disturbances that travel through the water, typically caused by the wind. They transfer energy across the ocean surface. Consider the following statements regarding ocean waves. The wave height is shallow uh, wave height in shallow water is less than deep water due to lack of energy available here. The maximum wave height is determined by the orientation of the landmass. Waves travel because wind pushes the water body in its course while gravity pulls the crest of the waves downwards. How many of the given statements is or are correct? So here, uh, waves is the first kind of motion that we will study. Motion on the uh, ocean surface, right? Motion of water on the ocean surface. So the thing about waves is that primary mover of waves is actually wind. Wind is the factor, wind is the mover that actually creates the waves. Okay? So if you have that maximum wave height is determined by the orientation of the landmass, this is absolutely correct. See, this is your seawater and strong winds are blowing on the seawater. These strong winds will end up pushing the water also and it will form waves. This is how waves are formed. Okay, so primary role is of the wind in creating these kind of waves. So second one is incorrect. Now, if you see the wave height wave height will be maximum near shallow water fine and why will that be so because when let's say this is ocean water and wave is just uh, moving around here so and this is called the crest of wave the topmost point and the bottommost part is called trough okay so crest upar jata hai because of the impact of the winds and the trough comes down because of the impact of gravity, because of which the wave sustains. When it is on the ocean water, then it is uh, going at a standard rate. But when it hits land, when it actually makes a landfall, the wave makes a landfall, then it actually rises right? because it gets, uh, gets a sudden uh, stop. So energy is at that time, but because there is a sudden break, there is a sudden uh, you know, uh, inhibition at the end of its journey, so the height of the wave rises. 
and in fact what is tsunami tsunami is nothing but a wave only so the height of tsunami will be much more on the ground as compared to the land uh, uh, as compared to the water theek hai to ye first wala statement galat ho gaya although the speed of the wave the speed of the wave will be much higher on the water and why is this so higher on water because there will be constant supply of water and the impact of uh, wind also will be constantly there jab land pe aa jayegi to land pe to water ka supply khatam ho gaya na to that's why the speed will not be sustained so height maximum wave height is uh, wave height in shallow water is not less it is more than in deep water and though there is lack of energy but the reason is that there is sudden landfall so uh, first one is incorrect and waves travel because wind pushes the water body in its course while gravity pulls the crest this is absolutely correct the topmost point is called crest and the bottom is called the trough c and t aise karke aapko yaad rakhna hai so here only one statement given statement is correct next consider the following factors affecting wave formation in ocean pressure or stress from the atmosphere earthquakes gravity of the earth and celestial bodies so yahan pe kaun sa kaun sa factor hai jo ki wave formation ko impact kar raha hai now for those of you who know about tides you might think that gravity of earth and uh, the celestial bodies so if this is the earth the gravity of the earth is functioning in this direction towards the earth and the gravity of other celestial bodies like moon or like the sun they are working this gravity is working in the opposite direction right and you might think that this is the reason why tides occur the gravitational force of the moon and the earth and our centrifugal force is the reason why tides occur galat nahi hai aap you are absolutely correct but you need to know that even tides are a sub part of waves only tides are basically waves which are more periodical which are more predictable hai na which happen because of primarily because of the gravitational pull of the moon and the gravitational pull of the sun but the question that is being asked is that wave formation kis kis cheez se impact hota hai प्रेशर और स्ट्रेस फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फेयर डेफिनेटली दिस विल इम्पैक्ट वेव फॉर्मेशन राइट देन अर्थक्वेक्स इफ द बॉटम ऑफ द सी इज मूविंग इट इज डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू इम्पैक्ट वेव फॉर्मेशन एंड ग्रेविटी ऑफ द अर्थ एंड द सेलेस्टियल बॉडीज इज डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू इम्पैक्ट वेव फॉर्मेशन एंड द काइंड ऑफ वेव दैट आर क्रिएटेड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस आर कॉल्ड टाइट्स बेसिकली so here all three are correct so waves important hai kis factor ki wajah se wave ban raha hai that is also important consider the following statements third question the gravitational force exerted by the moon causes high tide on the side facing the moon and low tide on the opposite side when the sun the moon and the earth are in a straight line the height of the tide will be higher which of the given statements is or are correct although 99 परसेंट से भी ज्यादा मोर देन नाइंटी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द मास ऑफ द एंटायर सोलर सिस्टम बिलोंग्स टू द सन सन ऑक्यूपाइज मोर देन नाइंटी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द मास ऑफ द सन ऑफ द सोलर सिस्टम स्टिल बिकॉज ऑफ द डिस्टेंस दैट वी हैव फ्रॉम द सन इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अर्थ एट द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ मून इज मच मोर क्लोजर टू द अर्थ राइट एंड दैट्स वाई प्राइमेरीली इट इज द uh impact of the moon which will impact the creation of tides theek hai moon ka jo gravitational pull hai that is very periodic right every 7 days it changes its face it is constantly revolving around us hai na and every uh 15 days there is a new moon cycle so that is a very periodic movement and that impacts the tide so gravitational force exerted by the moon causes high tide on the side facing the moon and low tide on the opposite side yes here when it comes to the tides 
द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ मून इज मच मोर देन द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ सन आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ दैट इज बिकॉज मून इज मच मोर क्लोजर टू अस राइट सो फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट जिस भी साइड पे मून होगा द टाइड विल बी हायर ऑन दैट साइड एंड ऑन द लोअर ऑन द अदर साइड द टाइड विल बी लोअर फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट When the sun, moon, and earth are in a straight line, the height of the tide will be higher. Yes. So if this is the moon, and sun is here, sun is here, then we'll be able to. I mean, we'll be having the high tide time. But if this is the moon, and sun is somewhere here, sun is here. So basically, what is happening is that this is the direction of force of the. Uh, Uh, moon and this is the direction of force of the sun so they are counteracting against each other and because they are counteracting against each other the tide will not be able to take the height that it could take when they were in a straight line so here uh, b is also correct and c is the answer and when this is the situation when they are in a straight line that is called spring tide how will you remember this spring suddenly uh, springs right it goes to a height suddenly so that is a spring tide which is a higher tide and uh, this one when sun and moon are perpendicular to each other this is called neap tide okay this is lower than the spring tide theek hai so here c is the correct answer next Consider the following statements: A storm surge is a rise in sea level that occurs during tropical cyclones, and storm surges are caused due to atmospheric pressure. Which of the given statements is or are correct? So, storm surge is a kind of a violent wave which happens because of change in atmospheric pressure. Whenever there is tropical cyclone, if you remember, tropical cyclone will be formed only on ocean. where the temperature is around 27 degrees celsius so when this low pressure zone has been created and tropical cyclone is actually gaining its ground this lower area is having low pressure right and along with air air will come with a lot of force over here because high pressure se low pressure mein jaane ka ek tendency hota hai of every material right every material be it सॉलिड लिक्विड और गैस राइट सो हाई प्रेशर से लो प्रेशर में ये गैस जाएगी एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दीज स्ट्रॉन्ग विंड द वॉटर विल ऑल्सो बी टेकन एंड देर विल बी अटॉम सर्ज सो स्टॉम सर्ज इज एन ओवरऑल राइज इन सी लेवल दैट अकर्स ड्यूरिंग ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन्स इट्स एब्सोलूटली करेक्ट एंड इफ इट वॉज रिटर्न टेम्परेट साइक्लोन्स हियर इफ इट वॉज रिटर्न टेम्परेट साइक्लोन्स दिस वुड हैव बीन इन करेक्ट because temperate cyclones bring with them a zone of calm temperate cyclones do not bring storm surges theek okay? hai and storm surges are caused due to atmospheric pressure this is also absolutely correct a low pressure zone is created here high pressure is here because of which the high pressure chases the low pressure and it leads to storm surge so here both one and two are correct next match the following pairs tides and their characteristics diurnal tide spring tide semi diurnal tide and neap tide so here i have already told you about spring and neap tide so let's see how we can match uh spring tide is when sun and moon are in a straight line so sun moon and earth are in a straight line that is spring tide neap tide is sun and moon are at right angles now diurnal and semi diurnal see diurnal diurnal means two right so diurnal means one high and one low tide for a day that is diurnal and if we are having two high tides and two low tides for a day that is called semi diurnal fine so i hope this distinction is clear and this depends a lot on uh, perigee and apogee also um perigee and apogee kya hota hai perigee is basically the closest point of the moon near the earth because if this is the earth the moon is having an elliptical orbit around the earth it's not having a circular orbit right so this will be the perigee which will be the closest point of the moon around the earth and this will be the apogee 
right this is just a graphical representation to tell you how moon uh, uh, does its revolution around the earth okay so the point is that uh, usually it depends on the positioning of the moon and uh, this semi diurnal tide this semi diurnal tide wherein there are two high tides and two low tides every day this is the most common pattern of tides ठीक है दिस इज द डेली रूटीन ऑफ टाइट्स ठीक है तो अगर इफ इट इज नॉट सीन देन देर इज सम काइंड ऑफ अ डिफरेंशिएशन सम काइंड ऑफ अ मे बी स्ट्रॉगर पुल ऑफ द मून और वीकर पुल ऑफ द मून और एनी काइंड ऑफ दिस थिंग बट यूजुअली वी हैव अ सेमी डायर्नल काइंड ऑफ अ टाइडल सिस्टम ठीक है टू हाई टाइट्स एंड टू लो टाइट्स इन वन डे सो हियर वन विद ए Two will be with B. No, two will be with D. Three will be with C, and four will be with D. So A is the correct answer. Diurnal, semi-diurnal. I hope you are clear. You can be asked not in not just in uh, UPSC examination, but even in other examination. Uh, not just in civil services. Sorry, even in other examinations of UPSC, you can very well be asked this question. Next. With reference to ocean currents, consider the following statements: Current is the massive movement of ocean water, which is directional, continuous, and predictable. Differential temperature and density of uh, ocean water are the primary cause of the ocean currents. And solar heating, wind, gravity, and Coriolis force are the secondary factor for the ocean current. How many of the given statements are correct? ocean currents i have told you earlier as well that if this is the ocean and you just imagine a river which flows on the land i want you to imagine a river which is flowing on the ocean that is an ocean current theek hai i will never say that a wave is like a river on the ocean because wave is very sporadic or even for that matter a tide also is very short term okay although it's regular but it's short term but when we are talking about ocean currents ocean currents are perennial ocean currents are continuously running around on the ocean surface and transferring hot water and cold water from one place to another now see why does this happen see primarily what is there is everything happens because of insulation this is our equator these are the poles this is equator this is the, uh, the, these are the poles this is north pole this is south pole again i am assuming here and i am making this uh, very clear that earth has no tilt otherwise earth has a tilt but just for explaining it to you i am just drawing it in such a way that earth has no tilt so anyway here the temperature will be higher ocean temperature water temperature will be higher and here the temperature will be lower so the nature's way of balancing the high and the low temperature water is that the higher temperature water will move upwards and the lower temperature water from the polar area will move downwards theek hai mota mota yahi cheez hai jo aapke ocean currents hai it is basically redistributing the entire heat uh, of the entire uh, planet theek hai so ocean currents are very important and uh, they are massive movements of ocean water which is directional yes continuous yes and predictable yes absolutely correct so first is correct so that's incorrect for this particular question then differential temperature and density of the ocean water are the primary causes okay this might be correct but let's just see the third statement solar heating wind gravity and coriolis force are the secondary factor no these are the primary factors actually see i told you insulation is responsible for everything right so insulation makes the water warm or cold and when that water starts moving when that water starts moving for example let's say uh, this is the um, gulf stream that is moving over here from the northern side uh, fr uh, from the equatorial side to the north american side 
सो हियर इट इज मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द राइट हैंड साइड ठीक है इट इज मूविंग टूवर्ड्स इट्स राइट हैंड साइड सिमिलरली दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ओशन करेंट दैट आई एम गिविंग यू दिस गल्फ स्ट्रीम ट्रेवल्स अक्रॉस द नॉर्थ अटलांटिक ओशन एज द नॉर्थ अटलांटिक ड्रिफ्ट अगेन गोइंग टूवर्ड्स इट्स राइट साइड ठीक है Now, don't say that okay. This is the the direction that you have drawn is left. The direction might be left in your uh, vision, but just see that you are some somewhat stood here, and you are facing this way. You are facing this way. If you are facing this way, then your right is what this side, right? So it is turning everything in the northern hemisphere turns towards the right hand side. and everything in the southern hemisphere turns towards its left hand side theek hai so yahan pe coriolis force plays a major role in creating ocean currents so all these three three to four uh, reasons are actually primary reasons and the differential temperature and density of ocean water these are secondary reasons theek hai these are secondary reasons that how dense the water is what is the salt content according to which the heating will happen the cooling will happen right these are the secondary aspects so second and third are incorrect so here only two would be the answer next one which of the following currents are cold currents humboldt labrador kuril california tushumia and alaskan so here uh, i just tell you straight away that 1 2 3 and 4 is the answer that is humboldt labrador current kuril current and california current now because these are just revision classes i will not be spending a lot of time in making you revise the entire uh, ocean currents but i want you to do is go to your ncert and upon opening the ncert of class 11th indian physical geography you will be able to see the ocean water movements and within that you will be able to see a diagram with all the relevant ocean currents theek hai so please complete that and see that again and again so that you are able to remember it very properly theek hai chalo next match the following kuroshio uh, benguela tarif current and irminger current now here also uh, these are important currents kurushio is very important see let's say if this is the japan coast hai na just see an example this is the japan coast from the polar side there is a cold current which is called oyashio current oyashio oyasevo current which is a cold current because it's coming from the polar side and from the equator side the current that is coming is a warm current and the name is kuroshio kuroshivo current theek hai kuroshivo kuroshio jo bhi aap bolna chahe it is warm current and they are meeting somewhere near the coast of japan because of which there is meeting of warm current and cold current and that has led to massively fertile um breeding grounds for fish ठीक है दैट इज वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू टेल यू ओवर हियर दैट दिस हैज लेड टू मैसिवली फर्टाइल ग्राउंड फॉर फिश ठीक तो एक ये होता है और एक ये चीज होती है नॉर्थ अमेरिकन कॉन्टिनेंट में नॉर्थ अमेरिकन नॉर्थ अटलांटिक कोस्ट पे ठीक है नॉर्थ अटलांटिक कोस्ट में भी देर इज दिस वेरी स्पेसिफिक प्लेस कॉल्ड न्यू फाउंड लैंड न्यू फाउंड लैंड कनेडियन कोस्ट वेर इन द वॉम दिस वॉम गल्फ स्ट्रीम करेंट मीट्स विद अनादर कोल्ड करेंट ठीक है द लैब्रेडोर करेंट सो बिकॉज ऑफ द वॉम करेंट एंड कोल्ड करेंट मीटिंग दे हैव वेरी फर्टाइल फिश ब्रीडिंग ग्राउंड सो एनी वे आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दिस नाउ कुरोशियो करेंट इज एज आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू it is on the banks uh, it is on the coast of japan so kuroshio will have to be matched with the north pacific ocean right uh, kuroshio will be with the north pacific ocean so one will be with b 
ठीक है देन द बेंगुएला करेंट बेंगुएला करेंट एक्चुअली फ्लोस इन द साउथ अटलांटिक ओशन बेंगुएला इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट करेंट and it flows in the south atlantic ocean and uh, it is again a cool current theek hai kuroshio is a warm current benguela is a cool current then tarif current tarif current moves in the indian ocean as you can see the name itself shows you it's a little asian in its character right so tarif current is in indian ocean and arminger current arminger current is in नॉर्थ अटलांटिक ओशन ठीक है ये तो दो ये आपको चारों ही याद रखने हैं एंड हियर द आंसर वुड बी सी चारों ही कहा पे कौन से ओशन में बहते हैं एंड विच कोस्ट लाइन इज ऑल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट नेक्स्ट कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट सर्जेस आर रेगुलर वाइल टाइड आर इेगुलर सर्जेस आर मोस्टली ड्यू टू द ग्रेविटेशनल अट्रैक्शन ऑफ द सन विच ऑफ द गिवन स्टेटमेंट इज और आर करेक्ट so I just told you that surges are uh, surges का आपको पता हो या नहीं पता हो tides are very regular in their character so first one would be absolutely incorrect it's actually surges which are irregular surges are very irregular because if there is stormy weather then surges will happen so first is incorrect and surges are mostly due to the gravitational attraction of the sun no this is absolutely incorrect it is because of the differential heating and cooling of the water theek hai differential heating and cooling differential uh, pressure conditions of the water so here d neither one nor two is the correct answer all right last question for the class what is the tidal range the time between high tide and low tide the difference in water level between high tide and low tide average depth of the ocean or the distance between two consecutive tidal nodes what is tidal range so tidal range is the difference in water level between high tide and low tide if this is the ocean this is the coast and uh, this is the let's say the beach or basically the land if during a high tide the water goes till here and if during a low tide water stays till here this this area this middle area is called the range theek okay? hai tidal range bolenge isko so please remember this and if you remember uh, jab aapne environment padha hoga we'll study environment also there's something called high tide line and there's something called low tide line right so this is high tide line what is the extent of water which uh, what is the extent of distance that the water can cover during its high tide and the low tide line theek hai so the answer would be the answer here would be b all right okay so we are done with today's class uh, the topic for today's class as we all know by now was movement of ocean water primarily three kinds of movements we have done which is um, waves tides and uh, your ocean currents storm surges is also a part of it but uh, overall the three types we have studied your responsibility is to memorize the ocean currents now anyway because that is a very low hanging fruit if a question from ocean currents comes and if you are not able to do it correctly you will be very very um, angry at your own self that you will you were not able to catch a low hanging fruit so i don't want that to be happening with you so that's why please cover this particular thing and with next class i would like to congratulate you here because here we are done with the physical geography of the world aspect of it now we will move to the human and economic geography which from which by the way there are multiple questions every year which are asked and uh, these are the questions which you will do from the next class uh, the first topic that we are going to cover in the next class is population of india as well as the world theek hai to important rahega ye but uh, before attending that make sure that your class 11th world physical geography is finished uh, if you are doing it from the ncert if you are doing it from the sunya book make sure that your same part the world physical geography is finished finished from the sunya book 
all right so thank you so much for attending and i hope you derived some value out of this if you did do let me know in the comments and i will see you all in the next class bye bye